give us your, your scouting report on, on what, what he brings to that element of the special teams. Yeah, no, it's been great. You know, we had obviously Matt Wright and Randy, and those guys did a great job. Um, <clears throat> obviously, we we're happy to have them in here, feel good about them. I think at the end of the day, we're looking to make you know the roster with the best possible players we can get, whether that's somebody from inside the building or somebody outside. Felt really good about Austin. I think you know it was probably a collaborative effort. Obviously, Brad and those guys do an incredible job um, of evaluating all the personnel and talent that's out there. Uh, Dan's really involved with all that, and so we had a number of guys we had evaluated who were outside the building. Um, that we felt really good about, and we ended up getting Austin. We're all excited about him. The first thing I guess we look at kickers is accuracy and, and distance, right? So, 82-ish percent field goal is you know decent, decent mark. Uh, career long of 53, and I think in college long of 51. So, what what is your confidence level with with his range? How, how far can he? Play? Yeah, I would say. I mean, he was hitting 61 yarders the other day. I mean, he's got a really big leg. I think that's one of his real strengths, to be honest with you. I mean, he's obviously tremendously talented. I think he's a fifth round pick coming out of Oklahoma. You know, going to Cleveland. I mean, uh, everybody saw him. I think is probably the number one kicker coming out that year. I think a lot of kickers, they, when they come out, they have some ups and downs, and some of these guys take a little bit longer to get started. If you go back and look at some of the great players in this game at that position, like Vinatieri is really kind of an interesting guy. Like you look at his numbers and early on in his career, they were up and down quite a bit. One thing that happens with these guys, those numbers get magnified because there's just so few kicks in a season. So you miss one, you know, you, you should have made or whatever. And then all of a sudden it drops your percentage down or you're asked to kick a really hard kick in a situation where it's like, end of the half and it's whatever 58 yards and you're in Pittsburgh and the wind's blowing and you know it's a difficult kick that you might not take but those not those you know those change the numbers at the end of the year quite a bit just one miss so I think there's some of that the one thing that I looked at with Austin is I feel like over the last year he's really worked hard to improve his game and he's changed some things mechanically so for us, I felt real good about the fact that he's, he's not the same guy coming in here he's been. He's actually different, and in my opinion, um, mechanically, he's a whole lot better. And I would say I give Darren Simmons some credit for that. He does a great job with those guys that he works with. I had Jake Elliott, who was drafted by Cincinnati, and then they ended up putting him on the practice squad. We ended up picking him up when we had an injury to a kicker, and uh, I thought he was well prepared by Darren coming out. So I give him credit too. I give Austin a bunch of credit. I think he's worked hard on his game. I think we're getting a better player than he's been, um, but we're excited about him. Is that still an ongoing kicker battle? Have you, have you decided on a kicker for, for this week? Yeah, I would say at the end of the day, I, w I won't say who's kicking, and I'm not going to say who's starting or who, who's returning or any of those things, but I will say this. Uh, we feel real good about it. I would say also to your point of like, is it a competition? It's always a competition in this league. I mean, just like what happened to Randy Bullock and Matt Wright and Zane and those guys is, you know, we ended up bringing somebody in from outside who wasn't even in here. These guys all know that they're always competing, whether it's against themselves, somebody in the building or somebody outside the building. I think the great players focus on themselves. I think that's really our goal as a, as a unit. And it's my goal individually is just to try to get a little bit better every day. And I think that's what his focus is. Um, but, yeah, I feel good about where we're at. Uh, I guess I'll just follow up a little more with the, you said a lot of young kickers struggle. Um, you've been around this league long enough. Is there, do you think, is there a commonality there? Is there a reason why? Is it yeah, I don't, different? yeah, I wouldn't say it. Well, I don't know that I, if I said a lot of young kickers struggle, that's maybe the wrong wording. But I think there are a lot of kickers that have struggled in the beginning of their career at some point or the other. And I think sometimes it takes some of these guys a few years to really start playing their best football. Um, I would say that's probably the same thing at every position out there. It's just more magnified or it's more visual in numbers at that position. It's hard to tell, you know, like a corner or a safety did he play great every game? With the kicker, it's either he made it or he missed it, and everybody knows. So I would say I think all players get better as they go throughout their career. Um, and I think the kicker position is no different. But certainly there's a lot of examples of young kickers coming out who are talented but really not hitting their peak until a few years later.
guess, A, what do you like about him in that role, but then also, if he's just a special teams guy for you on Sunday, like, does, does he do enough in those, on those teams? To yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm not going to get in exactly who that's going to be back there. We do feel good about our plan. Um, you know, Godwin did have a nice return. You're asking about um, him in the preseason. He had a nice return in the last game against Indianapolis there. Uh, I thought did a nice job. But I would say more importantly for him, you ask about his role. Number one, I'd credit Coach Campbell. I mean, he called me in the offseason and said, hey, we're going to move Godwin to running back. Um, and he obviously was a safety and all that, and that really helped give him a chance to make this roster because we're pretty deep at the safety spot, and we had a bunch of good players. And uh, for him, he's a guy who can be a four-core player um, on special teams, whether he's returning or blocking, um, obviously down the field in coverage on kickoff and punt, um, and it's really been a great help for us uh, in the preseason. So I feel really good about him. He does provide a lot. He fills a lot of different job descriptions for us, and now he's, you know, provides a role for a third or fourth running back on game day to be able to contribute on special teams if he's up. I know you said you won't say who the returner is, but Felice is a guy that we've seen back there a lot. Um, the fact that he might be playing a significant role in offense, does that factor in at all? Like Maybe you want to keep him off special teams? I think uh, when you're talking about guys playing special teams, I do think that there's always a balance between offense, defense, and their role on special teams. And you're trying to maximize the whole roster. You're trying to balance out the workload and push it around so you're not taxing any one guy too much. Um, whether that's a core player, a returner, I think there's always a balance there. And I think you know their role on offense and defense fits into the equation at some point. Yeah, no, really excited about Hodge. Obviously, Brad had him out in L.A. Um, with the Rams there, and we watched his film. I mean, he's, he's made a lot of plays on special teams. That's not a secret. And for a wideout, a guy who can contribute on special teams, he's been really a four-core player. Uh, he's been productive in coverage, made tackles. Um, so definitely excited about what he, can, he brings to the table for us, for sure. Biggest challenge is, as you guys well know, who's going to be up, who's going to be down on game day, which we'll find out Sunday.
played San Francisco and New Orleans last year, but I don't think it was maybe a, a fair comparison of what that team was with all the injuries. But yeah. 2019 got that crazy 48-46 game. Yeah. And, um, that, that offense is just so versatile. It has so many things going on, so many weapons that they use. What, what is the focus for your defense? What, what do you start with as you're building out a game plan for these guys? Let me first say this. you got to give a lot of credit to Kyle Shanahan and the staff over there. I know those guys fairly well. I work with them in Cleveland. Mike McDaniel. I know LaFleur went on to the Jets. Uh, Shanahan. So I do have some knowledge about the, uh, the worth ethic of this group. I mean, they do a really good job. I think the number one thing they do is they understand matchups. And they try to put their best players in positions to make plays, like most coaches do. And most coaches say that. But uh, just being around him and just watching him, how he operates, man, he's true to that. So it's going to be a tough task for us. All right, we know that. I mean, they're, they, a couple of years ago, was at the Super, in the Super Bowl. All right, so um, we're excited about this challenge too, though. I mean, anytime you play against a team like that, you look forward to it. Um, so our guys are excited about it. I'm excited about it also. Talk about the, the eye candy, right? So they're, they're always showing lots of different things. A lot of it's not real. How, how do you enforce that, that eye discipline throughout the defense this week? Well, you just said it. It's discipline. And to be a good football team, you have, you have to be highly disciplined. And that's something that we preach, all the coaches do, just being disciplined and with your eyes, disciplined with your assignments, responsibility. Um, so if we just continue to do that, I think we'll be fine. I mean, again, like I said, our guys are looking forward to this challenge. Um, and I am. I'm fired up. I am fired up about it. That's not too often where you play a stretch of teams like we're going to play. All right? I'm not saying I'm looking ahead, but, um, but to play a team like this of this magnitude, Man, it can't get no better than this. Curious when you saw Trey Lance on. Uh, Trey Lance, good player. I mean, you can't be the number three pick without being a good player. Um, don't know exactly how they're going to utilize him in this game. You don't know the extent of the thing or whatnot. But uh, the thing we will always do is we'll always prepare all right, for, for any situation that might happen. So if he happened to play, we'll be ready to play him. We know what he brings to the table. He's a good runner. He right, has a big arm. All right, so we can't uh, we can't look past that. Uh, but you saw him in the preseason of running the zone read plays, and he's uh, he's pretty successful at it. So we just got to make sure we uh, we're prepared for that. With what you guys did in New Orleans with Baker, you expect to see more teams doing this kind of thing? Well, it's hard to say that. I have a, a background with Taysom. And he's a he's a special talent, and to be able to do the things that Taysom can do, um, there's a certain mentality you got to have. I mean, not only was he a good runner, but he was a passer. He was strong as I don't know what, and he was fast. So to be able to do those things, man, you know, I'm, I'm sure Kyle has uh, has his ways of utilizing them. But, you know, I don't want to compare those guys because I know how Taysom is. So, um, But I tell you what, I mean, you clearly see what his strong points are. All right, and that's one with the strong arm, right, and two is the ability to, to, to create plays in space. So we got to be good tackling the space. Man, every day is a big moment for me. I mean, I just look. I don't care who. I don't care if we're playing a peewee football team. You know, this because this is what I love to do. You know, I mean, every day I, I, it's a blessing for me to get out, come out on the grass and be around to be with the players, be with you guys, and uh, be able to call plays. I mean, that's that's you can't get no better than that. Trust me, you would know if I did. <laughs> Is this week from a coordinator perspective? Like what, you know, just what? Well, I would say this, as far as from what I'm used to as far as being a defensive back coach, um, of being in meetings and, and my routine I used to have of, of being with the players, uh, it's totally different now because now it's a big picture perspective. Um, and one thing I learned from uh, some of my coaches and my mentors is make sure I coach the coaches on what, what I actually want and how I see it, and then getting their perspective also, right? Because sometimes they, you know, they have good ideas also. So um, that's the one thing we do a really good job of uh, with the defensive staff. We have, we have really good dialogue. Um, listen, I, and I tell those guys, once we leave this room, all right, regardless of the opinions, we leave this room on one accord, and we do a good job of that. And that's just the way it's going to be, right? Once we leave the room, man, we're, we're on the same page, and, man, we're going to coach our butts off on whatever we want to do. Receivers, especially with Debo Samuel, what challenges can they present to your defense? 
<laughs> but the last three years, I think they led the league in, in run after catch. So that's the first one. Um, dynamic in space, really dynamic in space, uh, really good hands. Um, and then you see the athleticism. I mean, I think I forgot what game was. Ayuk made a guy miss, and he jumped up and jumped over a guy. I mean, you see that. Uh, Debo's a running back, right, uh, with the receiver skill set. I mean, anytime you have those type, those type of guys, not only have to worry about the passing game, but you have to worry about the receiver runs, right? And these guys do a good amount of that. So, um, I mean, you got to credit, you know, Shanahan and his whole staff. I understand this is exactly who we want to do certain things, and they do a good job of putting those guys in positions. Can't be afraid of a young player. Is that, is that part of why you wanted to see what they got here? In 2017, I had Marshawn Lattimore, I had Ken Crawley, I had Marcus Williams, I had Von Bell, who was a second year player. So I'm used to this. And it is what it is. Can't be afraid of a young player. We've got to coach him up. And that's our job. Do you like put him in those spots where there's not a full guy maybe behind him so it's like it's just you? Not worried about that. I mean, we want the best player. Right, we just want the best player. I don't care if it's a 12-year vet or a one-year vet. Right, whoever the best player is, that's who we're going to have. And it just so happened that we have young players here. Coming into the offseason, the edge depth behind Romeo and, and Trey was, I think, a, a fairly sizable question mark. Yeah. After this offseason training camp with, with the way Austin, Charles, yeah. and Julian have performed, how, how much higher is your confidence in, in the depth you have at that spot? Well, I would say this. Um, I think those guys found a niche of understanding exactly what uh, we want from the outside backers. And I think they've, uh, they've accepted that challenge. And I think they're happy with the, uh, uh, what we put them in position to do. Um, I mean, you're right. I mean, they came out blazing and did exactly what we want them to do. And I don't want to say surprise, but, but happy from what I saw. Now, there's still some kinks. Right, and we're gonna work through those things. Uh, but for the most part, man, we're uh, we're happy with those guys. So you're asking the rush against San Francisco? Yeah, they're they're they're, they're rushing. I guess you know they were rushing about well, yards. Oh, they're rushing attack. Yeah. Tough. <laughs> I mean, that's everything they're built around is the run game. And listen, they're going to make some yards, right? They're going to make some yards. We're going to do our, our, our damnedest now to do what we can because we're built on that. We're built on our front of making sure that we build a wall, we set edges, right? We make tackles. Um, so I'm not going to sit here and say, listen, we're afraid of their run game. I'm not going to say that. But I do recognize who they are in the run game. So we're just going to go out there and do our job and what our philosophy is for stopping the run. So um, – our guys are excited about it. They know it's a challenge. When you play against a team like this with the running game that you just talked about, I mean, you got to be excited to play against a team. Because like, it, 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 you want to measure yourself against the best, right? And they're one of the best teams, right? Hell, I want to measure myself against one of the best play callers, right, to see exactly where I'm at. So that's why collectively as a group, man, we're looking forward to this challenge. You see I'm getting fired up right now, though. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> We talked about discipline being important this yeah. week, and, and that usually comes with experience. So, yeah. how do you teach that discipline without having the reps? Is it, is it just watch a ton of film? Practice, do, do practice, 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 meetings, um, yelling, <laughs> a lot of that. <clears throat> but man, it's just listen. You got to start at some. You got to start somewhere. And the thing is, a coach, that's what you enjoy more than anything. It's the ability to take uh, take a player, take a man that's that's moldable and try to mold them into exactly how you want them to operate. And AP does a good job with that. All of our coaches do, and all our, co all our coaches look forward to that. Um, and even with some of the vets, when the vets know exactly uh, how, how much you care about them, how much you want to make plays, you can mold them too now. So don't get that twist and don't think you can't. All right, you look at Jamie. I think, I mean, Jamie's a really good example of that, of how he's taken this uh, this year. Same thing with Alex. Uh, those guys are excited about it too. So, um, Show a player that you care. Show them that that you want to put them in a position to make plays, right? And you get them to do exactly what you want, what they want, what you need them to do. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank you. All good. Yeah. All right, fellas.